Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh dan selamat sejahtera. So untuk video kali ini kita akan belajar mengenai IUPAC name of Arkins. Okay, so, so name the Arkins. We will use the same rules, which is we will write the prefix first. Okay, we will write the prefix first. Uh, after that, we will write the loken. So, loken uh, for this alkins is carbon-carbon double bond. We will locate where is our carbon-carbon double bond. And then, we write the parent name uh, and then the suffix. So, for alkins, suffix is E and E. Okay. So, we look at the first rule for the straight chain alkins. First, we need to determine the parent name by selecting the longest chain that contains the double bond, and then, the and then we number the chain from the uh, from the end closest to the double bond, and then we place the number to give the location of the double bond. So, for example, this molecule. For the longest chain, it has 8 carbon. So, we will number the chain starting from the left side. So, this one is the carbon first, carbon second, carbon third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth. So, when we look here, the location of carbon-carbon double bond is at carbon 3. Therefore, okay, therefore, uh, the prefix, there, uh, there will be no prefix because there is no substituents. And then the locant here is the location of our carbon-carbon double bond which is at carbon 3. So we, we put 3 here and then we have parent. Our parent is oc because we have 8 carbon. And then for the suffix is E and E because this one is a double bond, uh, contain carbon-carbon double bond functional group. So, the name is 3-octene. Okay, 3 here means that the location of carbon-carbon double bond is at carbon 3. Octene here means that the longest chain contain 8 carbon. Okay. And then we go to the branch alkenes. Same as straight chain alkenes, for the branch alkene, we will determine the parent name by selecting the longest chain that contain double bond. And then we number the chain from the end closest to the double bond. And if there is a substituent, it must be also closest to the substituent group. Okay, so we look at the example. For the first example, the longest chain is, okay, the longest chain is 4 carbon here. Yeah, this is the parent. We have 4 carbon, so the parent is butene. And then uh, uh, we have one substituent. Okay, and then we number the carbon starting from the left side because it is nearer to the carbon-carbon. Uh, double bond. So, this one is carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3 and carbon 4. So, that's why our prefix is at the location of 2 and then the number, the the name of our functional group is methyl. And then the location of carbon-carbon double bond is 2. So, we write the name of prefix first. So, 2 methyl and then the locum, the location of carbon-carbon uh, double bond, 2 and then butene. Okay, we look at the next example. Okay, what we have here is, okay, so for this one, our parent contains 6 carbon. So, the name is hexene. Okay, so we number the chain starting from the left. So, this one is carbon first, carbon second, carbon third, fourth, fifth and sixth. And then uh, what we see here, <coughs> the location of carbon-carbon double bond is at carbon 2. And then we have two substituents which is both is methyl, one at carbon 2, another one is at carbon 5. 
Okay, so the na the name for this uh, uh, molecule is 2,5-dimethyl. Why di? Because we have two same uh, substituent, which is methyl. So, we use the prefix di. So, 2,5-dimethyl to the location of the carbon-carbon double bond to hexane. Okay. So, we look at the cyclic alkenes. Okay, for the cyclic alkenes, the double bond in cycloalkenes must be number S1 and 2. And then, that also gives the substituent group the lowest number at the first point of difference. So, we look at this example. Our carbon-carbon um, our double bond must be labeled uh, must be number S carbon 1 and carbon 2. So, we number our carbon 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 double bond as 1 and 2. So, which one is the first carbon is the one that has the substituent. So, this one is the first carbon. So, for the substituent, we have only 1 which is methyl. The location is at carbon 1. So, no need to write 1 before methyl. And then, we have parent cyclopentene so the name is oh, sorry I think uh, we should write the name of uh, our uh, our substituent as one meter we need to put the location of the uh, substituent which is one meter and then the parent is cyclopentene then the name is should be one methyl cyclopentene. Okay, one methyl cyclopentene means that our methyl is at carbon one, and then cyclopentene. So in this case, no need to uh, locate the the position of carbon carbon double bond. So for cyclic alkene, no need to uh, locate the position of cyclo uh, of carbon carbon double bond. So we look at the next example for this one. Okay, we have two substituents. So what what will uh, we do when we have the uh, the cyclic alkene with two substituents? Okay, we divide it. Uh, we divide the carbon-carbon double bond, and then uh, we compare. We compare uh, which substituent that is nearer to the carbon-carbon double bond. So we see here this uh, substituent is nearer to the carbon-carbon double bond. So means that we need to number the cyclic alkene. In the direction of uh, clockwise, so means that this is the carbon first. Okay, this is the carbon first, and then this is the second carbon. This one is the third carbon, fourth and fifth. So means that our substituent is at the location of three at the location of the third carbon and the fifth carbon so we name as three methyl and fifth methyl and then the parent is cyclohexane so our uh, first carbon is here because uh, in the direction of uh, clockwise this substituent will give the lowest number okay so the name is 3,5-dimethyl cyclohexane. Okay, we go to the next part which is isomeric alkenes. So, what is a isomeric alkene? What does it mean by the isomeric alkene? It is the cistron isomerism that is uh, that differ by groups being on the same side which is cis isomer or opposite side which is same isomer of, of a side of rigidity in a molecule. So when we look at this 3D structure of alkene, we see here our hydrogen is on the same side which is on the below side. So when the hydrogen is on the same side at below, below the carbon-carbon double bond so means that our isomerism is cis uh, 
So for this one, our hydrogen is on different side. One is above the carbon-carbon double bond. Another one is below carbon-carbon double bond. So the isomerism that uh, that is uh, placed here is a trans isomerism. So how do we know? Okay, so there are two requirements for the existence of cis trans isomerism. The first one is a restricted rotation of a carbon-carbon double bond in an alkene or a single carbon-carbon single bond in a cyclic compound. There, are, there is only uh, two sides uh, of, of, of the restricted rotation which is at carbon-carbon double bond of alkene and carbon-carbon single bond in a cyclic compound so what does it mean by the restricted rotation so we look at this video atoms which are linked by a single sigma bond can rotate about the bond axis that is why alkanes are characterized by free rotation around the carbon carbon bond Okay, this one, the one that can rotate is carbon-carbon single bond in alkene. So, we compare it with al in alkene. The situation is different in alkenes. The nature of the double bond requires the p orbitals forming the pi bond to be parallel to each other. Because of this, rotation around the double carbon-carbon bond is restricted in alkenes. Okay, uh, the existence of carbon-carbon bond uh, make the uh, rotation of this carbon is not possible. Okay. Atoms so, which are So, and then the second, uh, the second factors that will uh, determine which carbon-carbon uh, double bond that has the uh, isomeric alkene. Uh, the second one is the each carbon atom of at a site of a restricted rotation has two different group of atom attached to it. Okay, for example, this molecule. When we look at this. When we look at this carbon-carbon double bond, so each carbon here, we have two carbon, each carbon must be bonded to different group of atoms. For example, for this molecule, uh, the carbon on the left side is attached to the hydrogen and chlorine. And then on the right side, our uh, carbon is attached to hydrogen and chlorine. So both are different. Okay, both are different atoms and group of atoms. So, this molecule exhibits cis-trans isomerism. Okay, this molecule exhibits cis-trans isomerism. But for this molecule, okay, so this uh, we look at the each carbon at the carbon-carbon double bond. So, carbon on the left side is attached to hydrogen and CH3, which is different. And then when we look uh, at the carbon on the right side, so kita nampak kat sini, okay, that carbon is attached to same group which is methyl. So means that this molecule does not exhibit cis trans isomerism. So when there, uh, when this molecule does not exhibit cis trans isomerism, no need to put cis or trans uh, at the prefix of the name. Okay, we can name it as usual. Okay, no need to put the cistrand as the prefix. Okay, so we look how we name the isomeric alkenes. Okay, to name the isomeric alkene, first, for example, uh, the uh, this example, so we know that this uh, as, uh, this molecule has isomeric alkene because uh, the each carbon each carbon 
at carbon carbon double bond is attached to different group of atom this one for the carbon on the left side is attached to hydrogen and CH3 on the right side also H and CH3 so different uh, each carbon is attached to different group of atom okay so uh, uh, where is our parent so our parent is here okay our parent is here we have four carbon which is butene and then we number the chain uh, nearer to the substituent uh, nearer to the carbon carbon double bond which is from the left so this one is carbon first carbon second third and fourth so the location of carbon carbon double bond is at carbon 2 so the parent name is 2 butene and then the isomerism that exists here is cis because we look here hydrogen is on the same side which is below the carbon carbon double bond both hydrogen is below carbon uh, below carbon carbon double bond so the name is we put cis okay we put cis on the on the at the prefix of the name cis hyper 2 butene okay cis hyper 2 butene cis here represent that our akin as a bit cis trap isomerism okay and then for the second example okay for the second example our parent is here which is 5 carbon okay so the uh, carbon is uh, the chain is numbered from the left because it is nearer to the carbon carbon double bond so this is the carbon first second third fourth and fifth so means that our carbon carbon double bond is at carbon 2 so the parent name is 2 pentene and then the uh, we have one substituent here Okay, we have one substituent here. So, our substituent is at carbon 3. So, 3 methyl. And then, the isomerism is trans. Why trans? So, we look at the com, uh, at the same same group of atom that attach to the carbon-carbon double bond, which is CH3. Okay, CH3 also attach at the carbon, uh, at, attach at the left carbon. And then, also uh, on the uh, right carbon. So the look, the position of our CH3 one is above double bond. Okay, one is above double bond, and then another one is uh, below carbon carbon double bond. So that's why uh, the isomerism is trans. So we put trans at the first uh, at the prefix of the name. So trans three methyl means that our substituent is at carbon 3 so 3 methyl and then our parent is 2 pentene so i think that's all for today assalamualaikum and good luck